Welcome back everybody, this is devlog 11 of my N64 slash PS1 inspired exploration adventure game that I'm making in the Unreal Engine. But actually I just wanted to release this new devlog today because it's my birthday and I thought, hey, what better way to celebrate my birthday than to put out a brand new devlog for Space 64. Uh, sorry it's been a little while, I know it's been about three, four weeks even since I last posted a devlog, there was also the progress update video, which if you haven't checked out, is really cool, it's a gameplay snippet, kind of a walkthrough of the area I've built so far, with some audio added so you can kind of get the, the full effect. Uh, go check that out if you haven't already, and if you're joining the devlog series because of that video, welcome, thank you all so much for watching. There's a lot to look forward to in the next 10 devlogs as we hurtle towards, you know, that big 20 number now. These devlogs are going to be a little bit more spread out, I'm probably not going to be doing weekly devlogs as much, just because it's the middle of summer right now, it's a lot going on, I'm busy with a bunch of other things, but that doesn't mean I'm not still working on the game and doing little things, there's some really cool things I'm going to reveal and announce over the next few devlogs. And actually, towards the end of this devlog, if you stick around right to the end, you're actually going to see some really cool announcements. So stick around for that. These couple of next devlogs are also going to be quite art focused. I don't have as much time to sit down and work on like coding and blueprint stuff right now. I need to really just focus on art when I have the time and kind of focus on art a little bit quicker. Hopefully that all makes sense. I don't want to ramble on too much because this is going to be a pretty long devlog as we're going to work on expanding that initial area outside of the crash site. And I'm going to talk a lot about concepts and a lot of other really cool things, including building the escape pod that we crash in. And we're going to put that into the crash site as well. So big devlog, a lot to look forward to. But let me pass over to pass Matt and uh, yeah, we will jump straight in with working on the intro area. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show in this devlog is me doing a little bit of art, specifically working on the first area as you exit that first crash site where you start the game. So I have this main idea where the land kind of sweeps up a little bit in front of you, so you could walk up this hill and look out over the full open area. So that's the first thing I build here, just kind of like a little ramp or something like that, but again, just so you can have a look over it. And maybe if you want to, once you have boosting and gliding, you could boost straight off there, get a little bit of height, and soar over the land. Uh, so along this way, in previous devlogs, I've had the first beacon kind of in this little crevice, little alleyway, just a little blocked out area. In my head, I've always had this idea that this is actually going to be some sort of cave and some sort of interior area, a really small interior area, but starting to tease the possibility of the three different environment types that you'll probably find on this, on this world, which we'll talk about. And... You know, I wanted to make sure that it feels pretty cool, it feels pretty grand. There's this old ancient relic in the middle, and you can go around it, you can... There's, there's probably going to be water all around it and all this sort of stuff. So, I mocked that up kind of briefly. I, I, I feel like when I'm doing this sort of art stuff, it's really calming. I'm just sort of like chilling, I've got music on loud, I'm watching something, and I'm just, you know, working away on my other screen, uh, building this sort of stuff. Which is why I usually time lapse it like this rather than talk over it in real time. One, because it would take forever, and I don't know many people would want to watch me just do this up for many, many hours where I'm just tinkering around and messing around with things to see how they work. But you can see here I've just sort of built this little uh, almost like circular area. I'm now cutting out another circular area. This is actually going to be a secondary crash site. So obviously you find that you, you crash at the first one. But there'll be something that happens in the first cutscene that means additional other pods and drop pods, escape pods, will also leave your ship as it's exploding and you're trying to get out of it. And one of those will actually survive re-entry to the planet or entry to the planet. It's not really re-entering. It's the first time it'll land there. And you'll be able to go into this crashed escape pod and it'll have a little bit more power because you will have taken some damage on your way down and you'll be able to go into it and this is what will give you your energy abilities it'll give you that energy diamond you'll be able to start using things like boosting and gliding once you come here and then you'll kind of learn how to use those pretty much straight away because you'll need to use them to get to the central island in this cave to then activate the first beacon which will be really cool that's sort of the idea anyway um, obviously right now where I'm at in the game's development I don't really lock things off just yet and things like that but it should be pretty easy for me to restrict the usage of the energy systems until you've reached this point. It should be a fairly 
easy implementation. Anyway, let's move on. Let's tidy some things up and start getting this thing looking pretty good. I know a lot of people have asked for specific things. I know people have asked for like texturing process videos, the best for, you know, UVing, the best for modeling, the best for a bunch of different things. So I do kind of want to show more of that over the next... I, I keep talking about these kind of eras of devlogs is in kind of tens. So you have the first ten, which is then ended and capped off with the first progress update video, which if you haven't seen, go check that out. It released a couple of weeks ago and it has audio in the game. It's like it got an audio pass on everything that I did. So you can kind of get a feel for how the game will actually play. But here is the start of the the next 10, right? So we've got the next 10 devlogs or nine devlogs, every many you want to say until we hit 20. And once we hit that 20th devlog, we'll then have progress update two after that. And I think it'll be interesting to see those leaps. And there are certain things I want to accomplish within those next 10 devlogs. And of course, all of you want to see very specific things. So at the very least, I thought, okay, what can I show this devlog that people have been asking for? Here's some art stuff, here's some, you know, modeling, and I want to also show some UV stuff, because I kind of UV things in a really weird way. I use certain sections of textures. I know some people have asked me if I'm using tile sets or, you know, some sort of multi-texture things where there's multiple textures within one image. I'm not doing that. I do see the benefits of it, though, but I am using a very small selection of textures, and I may actually start making some and merging some together into small tile sets so that loading them will be a little bit quicker. Anyway, let's keep modeling away here. And you can see this side, if you left the crash site and went to the left, you'll see is now kind of broken up and all sort of, um, you know, you'd fall off and you'd die or you'd reset. Because I want to restrict players from going that way. I want you to go to the right, to the cave, to explore, to go to that beacon first. And then once you've got your first beacon activated, you've got your boost jets on your feet, you've got your gliding abilities, that's when you can be like, oh, okay, I can now explore the world, I can go see the world, I can do everything. And as I, I was talking about UVing just a minute ago, here's me cracking away at UVing. It is an interesting process because a lot of people have different approaches to UVing and texturing and things like that. So I just thought I'd show mine a little bit. It's a pretty simple process and I do it fairly quickly and fairly roughly. And then once it's in game and I'm tinkering around with it and I see things, Maybe I'll go in and be like, yeah, let's do this or go back into Blender and tweak a few textures or tweak a UV here and there. It happens all the time. But right now I'm just using all the textures we've used already, just scaling them up, tweaking them in the UVs. And of course, we've got caves now. So we have to approach how we're going to do the caves a little bit. And I'm going to have to make some new objects like stalagmites and stalactites and I'm going to have to look at how we will light a cave and things like that. There's a, there's a lot to now think about because everything we've done so far has been outside. So how do we now start thinking about these interior areas? And just to, I guess, tease this a little bit, I'll talk about it maybe a little bit more later in the devlog too, but there's another area I want. So you have the outside, you have these interior caves, but I also want interior coral. I want you to be able to explore inside these living rock formations, these life forms that are coral creations. I want you to be able to go inside these things and scale them and then maybe jump across to different areas to find new beacons, find new areas. I think the idea of having to really navigate through these, what will essentially be, you know, pink, worlds these little sort of sub zones of the of the main area where you're going through i think will be really really cool anyway that's just a little tease i guess a little you know to sort of get your brain thinking on that a little bit but here you can see how it looks um and hopefully you you will like that hey everyone pass matt here and we're just about done with this area now so this is the exit from the crash site uh, all in blender here but you can see this is the, the crash site it looks very weird in blender uh, just because of the way I've set up some of the materials, but you come through here, you get the key, you unlock this door, and then you're now going to come out of here onto this sort of raised bit and be able to look over the world, which is, of course, currently a white void <laughs> in Blender. And then next to here, we have another coral tree. 
just kind of doing its thing, coral growth. Um, I was going to make that way bigger, but I ended up scaling it down. I might make the one on the other side over here. This one. I might make this one a little bit bigger, and maybe you have to go through the coral. Which would be quite cool to have, like, caves and then, like, coral interiors. I think that might be an interesting way to break up some of the areas so they don't all look like this. Because, of course, we've just built this cave over here. Um, which, again, has its own sort of look to it and will have its own, uh, you know, like things like stalagmites and stalactites and things like that. There we go. Now we can see better. So, yeah, if you look up into the ceiling there around this sort of, like, natural skylight, you can see we have this uh, ivy growing down and stuff. And if I go back to this view, you can get a better idea. These white boxes you see around, by the way, are just the height of the main character. Uh, just so I don't have the main alien character spammed all of my levels, I just use these. So there's actually going to be another crash site here. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the future, but it's going to have crashed straight through here. I might add more sort of like detailing to prove or show that's what's happened in the future. But right now that's it. Uh, the only new texture here is the ground. So there is this new sort of greeny, patchy, kind of mossy gray floor for caves. Because I felt like we kind of needed that. It couldn't really be the same as the very sort of lush green and red of the outside. But you can kind of get an idea of how that outside looks. We've tried to do a lot more with elevation and stuff. So it's not just a flat plane. It also decreases in height. So if you look here, this area where you first exit from is higher than over here. But yeah, this should all look pretty good once I get the material set up in game. And then I'm thinking of putting a water plane in here but it would need to be angled in some way, and I don't know if my new system works with that yet, so I might look into that as well. If not, I might turn this into some sort of, like, foliage pit or, like, a place where the, all the vines are on the outside. So you could climb out, but you couldn't climb into here because you have to boost over these to actually get to the, the central island, which is where you're going to get your first beacon. So let me zoom out through all this pink and you can see over here now you actually can't progress at all when you leave here without going over here first because if you come here and you you won't have boosting or gliding yet you would die same over here the auto jump would just push you down here because you, it's not this is too far basically it's not relevant or not possible for the character to make this jump at this point so you'd fall down and you'd need to boost or glide over here same here you need to do the same but then once you're over here, there'll be a new area and this can lead into, yeah, maybe a interior coral area, which sounds quite interesting. And we could make something a little bit more organic and vertical with like the inside of a, a coral formation. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything like that. So that could be quite interesting. Uh, but that's it. That's the opening area. I'm going to work on some other things for later in the devlog, but let's get this uh, in game next and yeah, see how it's all looking in game, let's run around it and stuff. Okay, I thought I'd record this very immediate moment as I import this new area. As you can see, complete transformation as soon as that comes in. Uh, really, really happy with this. And yeah, I thought rather than doing a past map section here, I'd just do a current, future, present map version, whatever we call these. Uh, you can see the floor got messed up because I haven't imported the uh, new ground texture yet, but I can do that really quick in a second. This is just using the one of the gro moss growth textures that I'm actually not using right now, but it used to be on the old dungeon entrance. But just checking everything else is fine. Nothing broke. I always worry when I import something, what's going to break? But yeah, this is literally my first time seeing it in game and uh, just checking, you know, what do I want to tweak? What do I want to change? Uh, do I like where the beacon is? That sort of stuff. Because you saw me just move it. That's actually where it was in the previous devlog and the progress update video so it's actually not too much further from where it was previously but you can see putting it right here in the middle it looks pretty cool got to do something special for that very first beacon that we come across right it's got to be somewhere unique and i think going into a cave like this and you'll see later in the devlog when i start adding more stuff to it and polishing this up it's going to look pretty unique and special which is what i want hopefully you all like how this looks of course we've now got that cave texture on the floor Looks way better. You can see there's another spot for the crash site over that way where we just whizzed by. Uh, but yeah, this is all looking pretty nice. 
what I did is I've added some volumetrics in. I tweak these even more, push them up a little bit more. I think these are a little bit too much in terms of bringing the light in, but it's pretty close to what I wanted. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So I guess I'll pass you guys back over. Hello everyone, Pass Matt here. And you've just been seeing me working on the art for this next area after here. So let me activate this doorway and let's go inside here or inside or through the, the doorway here. And now you can see our new part of the open area of the game. And you can see we can go up here and get a really cool view over the level. Just imagine how cool that's going to look when all of that is fleshed out and you see different coral trees, different different like small lakes and pathways and different areas that you're going to go visit. But let's draw our attention over here to the right of the entrance where I guess if you're looking this way, it would be the left. But you can see the door open back there. But now we can head over here and this is where the game will draw you towards. It will push you this way and be like, hey, you should go check out what's going on in this cave. And it'll, you know, push you in this direction a little bit. And you can see as we head over here, there is definitely something in this cave. Now in the previous devlogs, when we've been tinkering around with the beacon, it's kind of been in this area, like pretty much exactly where I'm stood right now is where it was in the previous devlog and in the progress update video. It was pretty much exactly here, but obviously now it's expanded on and you can see that there's a lot more going on in here. We have a pretty cool cave here and these are the start of my cave assets as well so you can see some of these different stalagmites and stalactites and columns and things like that all working in unison with some of the same rocks and things like that but i have changed some of the textures on those rocks you'll see over here these rocks have a different texture in general now i feel like that helps them stand out a little bit more against the cliff walls so you'll see you may have noticed that already as we we're walking around that's something i've changed how do we get over to that beacon well there's a few different ways you can't swim over there um, or at least you won't be able to right now i think it might no no you still can't climb up that's fine sometimes when i've been tinkering around with this you could but what you can do is if you drop in here you can climb back out on the rim of this at any point you can walk around here and you can explore the cave if you really want to you could zoom around check things out but the main goal is to get ourselves over to that middle island. So we boost over, a little bit glitchy right now. We'll work on that, we'll work on that. It's mostly collision stuff and also how the player acts in the air. But like I said, we'll work on that sort of stuff. And now we're over here. So again, if I drop down here and I climb back up and I just tried coming over here and being like, oh, okay, let's, I don't know, let's just try hopping over here. I'm sure we could make it it's just gonna drop us down and it's not gonna work. That one's a little bit close. I'll probably tweak some of the, the sort of ledges anyway. And there's still a little, there's a few bugs and stuff I'm working out while building this, but I'm really happy with it. So let's boost over here now. And you can see, here we go. And I can now activate this beacon and the cutscene plays. And you can see the camera zooms up and down to the dungeon. And we can see that we have activated our first pillar really happy with that i think this is really a nice sort of moment here where the progression happens so at this point you would jump off here ignore the water here there's a lot of bugs happening with my water shader right now and you could then go off out of here and you could go and continue exploring and finding all of the other beacons in the world and another thing you may notice over here and you may have noticed it in the section where i was building and modeling this area is now kind of broken up there isn't like a direct pathway here. And if I tried jumping off here, I would just fall to my death. So you need to make sure you've got the boosters or the glider first, and you can now come across here and do that. Again, right now, when you stop boosting in the air and stuff, it's just kind of a little hop and a jump, which is just temporary. But there you can see these kind of like crevices have kind of broken up the land here and you can jump across. But it is kind of a one-way trip once you're done up there, right now, that is it. I do plan on having another way of coming back here. And there will be other ways of getting back to this area. Especially connected probably over that way. So on the other side, you'll probably climb up. Be able to climb up and drop down just near the big coral tree over there. But once you come this way, that is it. And then right here, 
where there is that red, you know, evil flying monster that we've been tinkering with the AI with back in Devlog 9, I think, or 10. You can see there's now this grey wall here, this big grey cube with all the checkerboarding on. That is going to be a colossal coral tree. And in, you're going to be able to go inside this coral tree, explore it, and do a bunch of really cool things in there. Let me just fly back over here. If you want a better look at this area, by the way, here's how it looks in-game and everything. If I just hit this button, there you go. So, back in here, we talked about this crash site, right? We have this crash site right here, and this is going to be linked directly to how you start the game. Because obviously, we've already seen that over here, there is a crash site too. This is where you spawn, and you're going to be here in, a, in like an escape pod. But what if I told you the ship that you arrive here in, which will be destroyed in the opening cutscene for those people wanting a little bit of lore, maybe had more than one escape pod. And maybe some of those also got destroyed, but maybe another one survived and it also crashed here. And it'll be used to enhance the player and give them abilities. So this is my plan, is this is actually where you're going to get access to the boost jets and things like that. So all of that opening area, all through the door, all the way walking here, you'll only have walking speed. You won't be able to boost or glide or anything. So, for example, if you tried to jump off here or jump off here, you're going to die or it'll just reset you back to where you were before. But then as soon as you've gone, come here and you've got this check of, oh yeah, they've got here, they've collected this stuff, their suit's fixed or whatever, then you can go anywhere you want after you've activated this first beacon. So this first beacon is kind of a a teaching experience. It's like, hey, look, these are the things that you need to kind of, you know, explore and find on this planet. So there'll be kind of like an invisible dialogue box here where if you try to exit this area without first activating the beacon, it'll say, hey, maybe you should go check out that thing in the middle. And it'll just keep people, you know, in this area to teach them. And then after that, I'm going to stop handholding players and they can go and do whatever they want in this world. Uh, with that in mind, yes, the water's bugged. I do need to fix that. Not sure why it's doing that right now. I've tried a bunch of different things. It's kind of the edge detection uh, kind of shoreline system that I need to revisit. And that's about it. I, I'm pretty happy with how this all looks. I'm really happy with the... Like, this angle is really cool. I love just kind of hopping up here and just viewing the area. But enough of me rambling on and, and spending time on nothing for like 10 minutes of the video. Let's talk about, let's actually just build this. So in this next section of the devlog, what I'll do is I'm gonna mock up and do like a 3D mock up, a 3D sort of concept of the main character's ship that he will arrive in, in the intro cutscene of the game. I don't plan on finishing it. I just wanna mock it up and get some ideas out there. And then I will really narrowly focus on just the escape pod. And what we're gonna do is build this escape pod, build how it's going to work, and how the character's going to sit in it, and all that sort of stuff. And then we're going to just destroy it, and drop it in the world here, and at the starting area. And we're going to have the first pieces of our main character, and their alien technology, in the game as well. So, let's do that. Okay, and we're going to work on the spaceship, which is pretty cool, right? Don't get to say that very often for a devlog working on a spaceship pretty amazing <laughs> for me anyway so this is going to become the main character spaceship and sometimes instead of just me going into photoshop or illustrator or something and drawing i like to just jump into blender and just start mocking out shapes and throwing things together and seeing if the ideas i have in my head actually work when it comes to 3d so that's what i'm doing in the background none of this is going to be final there'll be another devlog in the future where I actually remodel all of this uh, properly. This is me just very quickly roughing out shapes and designs and ideas. So don't think any of this is final. It's definitely not. It's just me sort of throwing ideas at the wall and seeing what sticks, what works, what doesn't. All of that sort of good stuff. So I guess I'll talk a little bit about kind of my approach to devlogs going forward while we're looking at this right now. Because for me going forward, the devlogs are going to be maybe a little bit more scattered they're not going to be as frequent as they used to be 
because there's a lot more stuff going on in my life right now. Is that I'm really busy. Also, the worst thing has happened, which is that it's hot now in England. It, we've got the British weather happening. And I spy the British weather, I mean specifically the summer British weather, where things have just got really hot. And even though I'm celebrating my birthday, it's still way too hot. So all I want to do is stay inside and play Final Fantasy, which is exactly what I'm doing when this devlog comes out. So, yeah, I'm sorry if people are looking forward to devlogs being weekly again. There might be a couple that are weekly, then there'll be a space, and then there'll be a couple more that maybe are weekly, or there'll just be one here and one there. Just purely because I get so drained, and my motivation drops so quickly when it's this hot. So, bear with me as the British summer kind of wages war with me. And hopefully, yeah, in a few weeks or maybe a month or so, things will level out again and I'll be posting more frequently. Anyway, let's get back to talking about what's on the screen. Um, this is now the second version of the mock-up and it's a much more simplified version. I'm just going through and creating things with that overall shape, that V shape now, but bringing a lot more of that angular diamond motif into this, even though it's now been elongated and stretched. It's a mixture of that V-shape, like a wing, and the diamond shapes all mixed together. And I'm pretty happy with this, actually, already. As a shape, it feels pretty powerful and pretty strong. Um, it's not perfect, and like I said earlier, I'll definitely be revisiting this design in the future. But I do feel like this is pretty much what I had in my head. It was this whole thing here. And again, it'll change, but hopefully you all like this as sort of a, a design that fits within the game that you can see links to our main character. And now I scale it up and I've brought in our main character as well so I can kind of get an idea of scale and how things are going to fit together. And yeah, I think this is pretty much it. Um, I'm drawing on some different ideas now, but I need to start thinking really, how are these escape pods going to leave this ship? Where are they going to be housed? Where are they going to live in general? How are they going to fall out? What are they even going to look like? Because really the most important thing is figuring that out. Because we're going to need to build this escape pod using this as a base design, this sort of aesthetic here. We need to figure out how these escape pods are going to look and get them in game. Because putting them in the crash site is actually a little bit more important than, you know, anything else. We, we should really have something in these in these areas these crash sites and you can see we've skipped ahead a little bit i'm working on uh, the escape pod here now and it's this very geometric and diamond shaped uh creation again so it fits the the motifs that we have already created but you can see i'm working on the viewport where the main character will be able to see through when they sit in the front of the escape pod and Already, I'm, I'm feeling pretty great about this. I've mocked up a lot of different shapes. I'm trying a lot of different things. I'm trying to maneuver with these wings and all these different shapes. Uh, I forgot to record some of it. Again, I was watching a bunch of different things, including um, different gaming events and stuff that happened in June. I've been watching a lot of those on my other screen, and I just kept forgetting to press record on OBS to record Blender sometimes. But this was pretty much the design for the escape pods that I had in my head, this sort of small diamond pod that has different thruster arms that come off it and it turned out pretty great it's, it almost looks like a fish or some sort of aquatic creature in itself um, which is pretty interesting and my goal is to get this thing textured up and give it a blue texture actually give a little bit more of a blue identity to the main character's um, tech let's say and here I'm just tinkering around with seeing if I can get it to fit inside the other ship shape to make sure I can figure out, you know, where this thing is going to be housed and how it's going to feel. So with that, I think we'll pass it back over to Past Matt, who's going to actually walk through this and talk about it a little bit more and give you all some more information about this. Hello, Past Matt here. So I don't know where exactly in the devlog this is going to go, but say hello to our escape pod this is what you're going to crash land onto the first planet in and you may see that it has some similarities to some of the shapes that you see from the alien tech on the planet so to reveal a little bit well i'll reveal a little bit i guess and we'll go back to some of these things so 
our main character here, our alien fella, is actually from a race of beings, and on their planet, they found similar alien technology to what we see in the game. These different alien ruins that we are reactivating throughout the game. His species found and reverse engineered it, and a lot of his technology is actually based around the stuff they found and they reverse engineered, including their ships and the way they travel through space. It's very much based off the technology they found. So you'll see that there's this, you know, very common diamond shaped motif that his technology borrows, but his technology is very much more silvery white and blue. And this is something you'll see in the larger ship design. I know we showed, I should like me doing some sort of early concepting for that ship design. That's something I'll explore more later. The main reason I was doing that was just to kind of get an idea for the size and also some of the silhouettes that I wanted to take into this escape pod. This escape pod is more important to design now. And we'll go back and refine the actual larger spaceship, which you'll see in the opening cutscene at a later date. Because we need this in-game for a number of reasons, but the first reason is we just need it in-game for that crash site. Uh, because, you know, that's where, you know, you're going to start in here, crashed on the ground, and you're going to wander out of here. So, let's talk about some of its features. It will drop out of the ship, fold it up like this, and then its engines will start to boost, and to start doing some maneuvers, it will use these different arms, these little different thrusters will come out and it will maneuver around and these might come at different angles and start doing some different things to kind of maneuver around as it darts and spins through the air. It might, I don't know, if I actually did a this and this, you might see the whole ship starting to spin and roll and do a bunch of other cool things. That will all happen in the opening cutscene when you first drop out of the ship. But of course, it's not going to be an easy landing and you're not going to make it down to the surface very easily, and more on that at a future date. But you can see inside, there isn't a huge amount of space, because the large portion of this here is actually used for the energy and the drive systems in this escape pod. It's meant to, you know, you're meant to be able to survive in it if you actually went into the vacuum of space for a while. It's meant to be a little ship that someone could come rescue you in. But it is only really meant for one person behind our main character, you've got the main drive core, and this will be spinning and doing a lot of cool things back here, spinning away constantly. And our main character here uses three different holographic plates to navigate the yaw, pitch, and roll of this, which also controls these arms and things like that. And that's pretty much it. Um, I tried a few different things um, while making this, but I'm really happy with these sort of darker hex windows for now. I think it looks pretty cool. Obviously in game we'll be refining that a lot, but we aren't really going to get this version in game because we don't need this clean, pristine new version in game yet until we start working on that intro cutscene. Instead, we're going to be taking this one in game. This is its beaten, battered, broken, crashed version, which is going to be where you start the game. See, it goes through quite a lot of wear and tear in that opening cinematic. There is a lot that happens. And again, there's some textures I need to fix before we fully import this. But you can see it doesn't quite make it down to the surface, you know, unscathed. I've also got here a couple of extra pieces. These are from the thrusters, the armor thrusters that I can use as scenery or objects in game. So what I'll do is I'll import this as one thing. And then I'll probably import this as two different pieces. And then this front viewport piece I'll also import separately. Just so we can place them somewhat more interestingly in that, uh, you know, intro cutscene area. Well, well, the intro cutscene, the, the crash site after the intro cutscene what, that you've seen me be building and everything. Uh, but that's it. Hopefully you will like it. I really like how this sort of stuff turned out because if you go back and look at the actual clean version, it's really cool to see the damage and the wear that's been done to this. And it's, I, I should have recorded more of it because I was just doodling and drawing in Photoshop and then I ended up really liking some of these effects and keeping them. But I was watching while working on this, just to date the footage, I was watching the Xbox showcase uh, earlier in June. That was while I was working on the cleaner version and now this more rugged version today, I was actually watching the Ubisoft Forward event. So we're talking like what, the 11th and the 12th of June? Just to date when I'm recording this, so you know where I'm at. But there we go, only thing to do now is to get these in game and start, you know, seeing and feeling how they actually feel as objects in game, because now we are starting to build out the aesthetic for the main character, 
we start having a little bit more lore and history about him. We also have the diamond-shaped alien ruins and relics on the planet with the sort of green lines through them. And there's meant to be a disconnect there. They aren't meant to look the same. For reference, the alien ruins and tech that the alien species that you play as found on their homeworld was very, very similar, but more blue. And they kind of were drawn to that blueness and actually ended up making all of their alloys and metals out of a lot of blue lights. And they would take a lot of the silver and the blue and mix those together from the greater aesthetic that you've seen of the alien ruins. It, this is mostly just for me to be able to distinguish them because I still want to keep this diamond approach for those because then it means that the alien ruins and our main character have a direct link and then when I start building out the enemy species which I'll talk about in a later devlog they can have more hexagonal or maybe not maybe circular even design motifs that are so detached from this that they look even more alien and weird and unfamiliar because you're so used to these you know specific angles and designs and such Anyway, that's enough of me rambling on in the middle of this devlog. Hopefully you like how the escape pod has turned out. Let's get it in game. So I did record this little bit of uh, time-lapse footage here of me just putting the crashed escape pod into the original crash site area, just so that, you know, you can see a little bit of me placing some of the objects and placing it in game and figuring some things out, which, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of fun trying to fill these areas out now because I've had this vision in my head for such a long time, but... We've been wandering around this area for like eight devlogs now and it's just been, you know, a, a, a crater with some smoke coming out of it. But there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm really happy with it, actually. Hello, everyone. Pass Matt here again. Probably for the last time this episode. Didn't know what I was going to say there, but here we go. So the escape pod is here. This is the crash site. This is where you're going to spawn in at the very start of the game. Obviously, things will change. We'll probably add some more assets and some more uh, tweaks and such as we go on. But, yeah, here we go. This is how it looks. Let me head up here. And I'll show you how it looks from a slightly higher vantage point. If I head right here. There we go. I'm really happy with this. I think it looks really cool. I love that we now actually have an object in there and we can actually see a physical object that is this crashed uh, ship. Uh, the blue is maybe a little bit too bright uh, right here, even though the textures are already darker. So I might play around with the materials a little bit here because I feel like this thing's just gone through the atmosphere. It probably should be a little bit more, you know, beat up and dark. But the thing is, it is in the textures, so I'm not entirely sure why it's so light here. It might just be something to do with the brightness of the sky and everything, but yeah. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it looks. I love the right behind the player right now I can't I'm literally pointing at my screen but the the viewport the glass viewport that's there uh like kind of cracked on the side and kind of broken apart and stuff I think it looks really cool yeah I'm really really happy with that and here's how it looks from an even higher ledge you can just see down there all the smoke billowing up and the flickering lights from the crash really really happy with how that all turned out actually I think it looks great I'd love to hear what you all think down below in the comments hopefully you like the alien tech a little bit you might be a little confused but hopefully i've explained and i've teased and talked about enough about the lore of our main character i know i've only talked about it lightly in this episode but i think over these next 10 episodes as we hurtle towards the 20th devlog i want to reveal a little bit more of the story so you all can kind of understand kind of where my brain's at with that a little bit more and of course let's revisit the cave here because i did say there would also be a crashed escape pod here and here is its crash as you can see similar setup but a little bit less debris so uh, rotated a little bit differently but there it all is and i'm going to figure out some way where you're going to go inside this somehow so i might have to move this around a little bit but there'll be a large light that will glow and then when you exit you'll be able to use your glide and your boost and you'll have access to the you know the stamina energy wheel that you can see there, the little diamond. Which I suppose I should also talk about, right? I don't know if you guys have noticed while I've been sort of walking around here, but it now always stays on the same side. No matter where I walk or anything, it will always stay on the left-hand side of the character, kind of in a locked position there. It kind of does follow the player, so you can still see as I'm moving around here, it still follows the player around, but 
it no longer rotates with the player as you saw in devlog 10 this is now a new fully improved energy wheel that i'm way 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 happier with as you can see it works perfectly and i can just walk around and it stays there much more now uh, closer to, say, the stamina wheel in Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom or something like that, which is great. And a lot of people as well were talking about the, the bar in the top left corner, the blue bar, because it does the same thing, right? We have the energy diamond here in the middle, and we have that bar in the top left corner. The You know, eventually, when I keep polishing on the hood, that bar in the top left corner will disappear. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with health yet. I don't know if I want it to also be situational, because obviously right now... You wouldn't see the energy diamond until you start using that energy. And then it stays on screen until it's fully recharged. As you can see there. I think health is probably more important to be visible. And is always communicated to the player. A little bit like hearts. Again in Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, so next, before next time I'm going to try to fix some of this water stuff. Because yeah I'm not sure what's going on with the way it's sort of like figuring out the shoreline. It doesn't look great. Um... I'll explain it very quickly here, if my camera speed was a little bit lower. If you can kind of see right here it's kind of glitching out and it isn't generating the shoreline around these objects, but if I pull in something like, I don't know, a cube, you can see it works perfectly on, on this. So I'm not entirely sure if it's a collision issue or something, or if my shader is messed up, I am going to look into that. but. I'll pass it back to Future Matt in case there's anything else Future Matt wants to say, talk about, to wrap up the devlog. But that is pretty much it on the on the devlog this week. Thank you all for being patient in, in getting it. I'm sure Future Matt's going to say all of this. But this is a very art-focused devlog. And, you know, I had a lot of fun just making all this different art. And now we have, you know, we have the escape pod in. And we have the fully clean, realized version of the drop pod as well, ready to go for that opening cutscene which I want to start developing as well. So a lot of exciting things to look forward to, I think. And that is a devlog. Thank you all so much for watching. I have a few more cool announcements, so stick around. But yeah, thank you so much. It's great to be back. Like I said, devlogs aren't going to be as frequent at the moment, but I imagine as the year goes on, they'll probably pick back up again as the weather gets a little bit colder. I am boiling right now, but I am happy to be sat here working on the devlog and showing you all all the cool things I've been working on for Space 64. So the big announcement that I want to announce to you all and reveal to you all is that Psych Mandrill has come on board and is doing concept art for Space 64. This is the first piece of concept art I want to share with you all that they've done. This is actually showing a battle or the conflict that's about to happen between our main character and a mother hopper. I've talked about in previous devlogs about how I want all these species to have different variations and sizes. And this is a really cool one that I suggested that we do for the first piece, which is that, you know, let's show something of the main character doing battle with a large version of one of the hoppers. And I love what Psych Mandrill came up with. Really, really cool, awesome mother hopper, queen hopper, whatever you want to call her. I think it is badass. Hopefully you all have enjoyed the way I've revealed this as well. And a couple of folks in my Discord, Rimrook and Morgan, have been working on a lot of different music and soundscapes and cool ideas for the game as well. They've just been kind of throwing things together and creating some amazing stuff. And actually, Morgan made something that you're listening to right now. This is the piece that's playing under this whole section. I absolutely love it. I think it captures the mood and tone of Space 64 amazingly. So thank you all so much. And of course, if you guys want to join the Discord, head on over there. Info is on the screen, and you can also click at the link in the description. Uh, join up on the Discord, and yeah, chat away. I'm always in there chatting away to people, and uh, I love seeing people putting in their different fan art and things like that as well. I included some of those in the footage you've been seeing as well, so thank you to all the fans of the game who have been putting in work and sending in fan art as well. It's really, really appreciated. And of course, a huge thank you to our YouTube channel members, Dan Sanger, David Nurkella, Java Matrix, Mazzy, Cushion Sap, Black, Austin Lindquist, The Portly One, Psych Mandrill, and Victor Hughes. You're all 
amazing people for supporting the channel and of course everyone who is a channel member and you give money to the channel or you send super thanks in all of that money goes back into the game to support the game and making it and all the proceeds will keep going to making sure that space 64 continues to be the coolest i can make it and i promise you that and that is it for this week. Next time in the next devlog, when I do another one, we're actually going to be exploring new environment types. I know we built a cave this time, which a lot of that sort of aesthetic will be going into caves and tunnels more. But I want to explore more of this idea that I talked about in this devlog of an interior coral space. Now, how would a vertical coral space inside a huge coral tree look? What enemies would live there? And where on the planet do we want to have these sort of interior areas? And what about a coral expanse, a huge area of alien coral that's grown in between all these different areas of a larger coral piece. It's all still inside a huge coral section, but it's this huge wide area filled with different coral branches and trees and life forms that just stretches out in front of you. I think adding that variety to this world would be really cool because you've got these outdoor areas with all the light coming in and the rain you know drizzling down and then you've got dark caves with stalagmites and stalactites and all that sort of stuff going on in it and then what about these unique crazy weird looking spaces that i talked about inside some coral so that's the thing i want to explore next more art yes it is going to be more art focused but in the future i do want to get back to you know revisiting some of the systems some of the concepts and some of the ideas in the game uh, actually physically so the things that you actually do while playing and I think that'll be really exciting. All right, well, that is it. I'm going to go back to celebrating my birthday, which you may be wondering, Matt, how are you celebrating your birthday? Well, right now, as this devlog goes live, I'm sat on my sofa playing Final Fantasy 16 in the dark, having a very nice time, because that's how I celebrate my birthdays. And that's it. I guess I'll stop waffling on here at the end of the devlog. I hope you've all enjoyed it and the little reveals here at the end. I will, of course, be back very soon. Stay tuned on Twitter, YouTube, Discord, wherever I post updates for more cool things. And I will, of course, keep you all updated for when the next devlog is going to be. Excited to share more and dive into, yeah, those, those things that I've been talking about. Because Psych Mandrill's already been concepting up some really cool ideas for these coral interior spaces and the creatures that are going to live there. And I'm really excited to dive into maybe just one big deep devlog all about these coral spaces and we make a our first sort of coral environment we even make some creatures and we really start thinking about that as one of the three biomes i guess of this first planet if you think of the open areas and then you think of the caves and then you think of these coral interiors those can be the three main areas but obviously they can be the three main biomes but then of course variations of those as we develop the planet as well okay i will actually stop talking now thank you all so much i'm gonna go back to enjoying my birthday have a good day, everyone. Goodbye! Hello, welcome to the after party. So, if you're hanging around to this part of the devlog, I'm mostly just asking for help from people who know how to use the Unreal Engine, so that's pretty much what this is. So if you have any idea why these bugs are happening, please let me know, let me show them to you. I've been playing the game a lot and you know, tinkering around with a bunch of things. So the first thing I talked about in the devlog is why this, like, edge shader, the shore system, the, the the way this shader kind of detects the edges is just super broken, and I don't know why. Over here at our first area that we built, it's actually happening as well. And I actually tried a different system here just to see if I could fix it, where I split up all the different things. But this is working still over here. It doesn't look as good as it used to. It doesn't really feel like it's moving much or anything. But over here, yeah, it, it, it doesn't look great at all. And for people who just want to see the actual uh, shader here, this is how it's been done. Uh, mostly this system right here. And yeah, maybe, maybe that's what I need to do. But even still, it doesn't look great. It's maybe passable if I sped this up a little bit. Well, maybe not that much, but... And those tweak settings over here don't look great either. So I'm not sure if I just need to go back and rewrite the the shader code for the shoreline. Because like right here, it used to look a lot better than this in all the devlogs. And I'm not sure what has changed really. So let me show you another weird bug that's been happening. Sometimes the collision just gets messed up like this. You see how easy that was for that bug to just happen? And now I'm walking like some Chip and Dale character. So you may be thinking that's got something to do with collision, which is my guess as well. But if you look, 
it's pretty clean collision here. It's not like there's weird things overlapping or anything. It's pretty, yeah, clean and nothing's really cutting between this or causing any sort of like overlap. So it doesn't happen all the time, but there we go. I, I didn't even know what happened then. So I'm not really sure why that's happening. It seems to mostly just be around the beacon. See, now if I tried to swim like this, well, now we're in a different game entirely. And even back here, sometimes if I'm running around this, it seems to have like somewhat of a glitchy nature, but I've never seen it do to that sort of level or that sort of extent, that sort of glitchiness that we just saw, even sort of around these sort of sharper edges where you could climb up and stuff if you really tried. It isn't really breaking. I mean, that's kind of breaking, but it's not terrible in terms of something that I couldn't fix. Like around here seems fine. There's no weird clipping or you know, rotating the character, although the camera is now weirdly rotated. This is another thing that keeps happening as well. Lots of little bugs I am trying to fix, and hopefully folks might have ideas why, but you can tell, right? The camera's now tilted just slightly to the right. But yeah, by far the most regular bug is this. It just seems, it's so easy to replicate, and, you know, I feel like people are going to run into this in general, so... Yeah, if anyone has any idea why this is happening, I'm going to keep working on it, but I'll also wait for this devlog to be out and hopefully some folks have some ideas. Until then, or if you're just watching this just for the lols, have here's a funny thing that someone's going to turn into a gif and remind me of in like a year or two's time and be like, look, look how silly the game was when my character runs at a 45 degree angle like a weirdo. Although I kind of like it. Should I put this in the game as a cheat code or something? when I fix it. That would be fun. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please let me know if you have any ideas how to fix this, but check below in the comments as well to see if anyone else has also suggested any fixes and then reply to those rather than just a bunch of different comments. Um, that would be useful to have a little thread of things I could fix and implement. Please help.